Okay, well, welcome everyone. Um, new candidates for the uh, ECE 793 minute thesis uh, event. It's an, an event rather than a competition. Uh, my name's John Bandler, and I've subtitled this Engaging Real People in Three Realistic Minutes. And uh, realistic minutes does not mean hitting the, uh, the, the, the target of three minutes. It means two and a half minutes. It means two minutes. So three realistic minutes doesn't necessarily mean three. So uh, let me move my cursor over here. I uh, just want to alert you to another presentation along these lines. I've been invited to do a presentation for McMaster Global that's coming up in November. And it's called Competitive Presentation and Competitive Speaking, A Personal Perspective. And the three of us that will be doing this is myself, Daniel Tajik, who many of you know, and Aline Eid uh, from uh, Georgia Tech. So um, given that this is coming up and that we will also be talking about um, uh, presentations beyond three minute thesis, um, I'm going to restrict what I'm doing today somewhat so that there isn't, isn't really too much overlap there. Um, so we're delighted then to have uh, Aline Eid with us on the 10th of November. So our instructional assistant, Daniel Shields, is a member of the Auditory Engineering Lab. He completed his undergraduate and master's degrees in electrical and computer engineering at, here at McMaster University. He's still a member of the Auditory Engineering Laboratory where he works on developing a biophysical model for an auditory nerve fiber to simulate the effects of cochlear implant simulation. And we're also delighted to have, again, I don't remember how many times you've been with us, Mahmoud, but uh, 3MT guest, uh, Mahmoud is now Dr. Wagi. He's a research fellow at the University of Southampton in England, where he's online with us right now. Uh, as you see from his uh, bio here, his research is on wearable antennas and RF energy harvesting, uh, which is you know, really a hot topic in microwaves and RF these days. Um, and notice all the word best that appears there. He obviously did very well in his doctoral work. Uh, he has a best student paper award, a best oral presentation. And he came second best in both the IEEE Microwave 3MT competition last year, as well as at the University of Southampton uh, in, in that same year. So, He's done pretty well, and he's been judged by so many different people. So that's a great congratulations, uh, Mahmoud. So having said that, Ian and uh, Tim, would you like to say a few words? Sure, thank you. Thank you, John. And uh, in particular, thank you very much, uh, Mahmoud, for, uh, for joining us here. It's wonderful to have uh, you know, a, a, an international perspective on things that we have done. And uh, I, I think your perspectives on this kind of thing as somebody who has done it so recently will make this uh, much more real for our students and, and a much more engaging experience for them. So thank you very much. Uh, and to, uh, to Danny, thank you very much for, for being a part of this too. Uh, we're delighted to have somebody who's been so successful in these uh, competitions come back in uh, on this process, come back in, in, in this role. And uh, to all of you, I, I would like you to, to think carefully about Dr. Bandler's choice of the word event for this, uh, uh, this operation. This is really a wonderful opportunity for you to learn how you might be able to build your own skills at being able to communicate your research and ideas to a, uh, an audience that only, that, that only has a short window of time availability. And these are skills that will be of value to you across your career in a variety of different ways. You will have opportunities for career advancement 
if you can have an engaging conversation with a leader in your organization over a period of two or three to five minutes. Okay, and, and thinking about how you uh, engage and present yourself there can make a dramatic, uh, dramatic difference to the trajectory of your career. So I really invite you to engage and, and participate in this. I have seen some truly wonderful transformations from students who were shy and, and, and really concerned about public speaking, who transformed themselves over a matter of weeks into confident and really engaging presenters. And it has just changed their whole outlook on their ability to be able to communicate their research. So I, I, I'm really looking forward to, to this event uh, later this term and to how you uh, uh, may transform yourself and, and realistically look, thinking about this in the long term when you're not just transforming yourself for this, this event, but transforming uh, the, the path of your career. So I encourage you to really engage and, and think carefully about the feedback that Dr. Bandler and, and Danny uh, give you. And uh, I look forward to seeing the presentations at the end of term. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Tim. Um, I'll just add a, a couple of extra comments. So I've had uh, several students, including uh, Danny, who've uh, done very well in these three-minute thesis events in EC790, as well as some of our competitions that we've had. And as, as Tim mentioned, uh, we can see great, uh, great improvements and increases in confidence uh, in students who've, who've been through this. Uh, process um, and and as he as Dr. Davidson said, this could serve you well in in many ways in your career. Uh, I must say that um, these these uh, three minute thesis presentations, as Dr. Davidson said, are short and for a general audience. But I've seen my own graduate students who've gone through this process giving talks at conferences, presenting posters, uh, presenting uh, research results in lab meetings where the presentation skills that they've developed um, carry over to these technical presentations as well. Their confidence, their ability to communicate are really improved. So um, I, th I think it's really transformative, not just for general presentations, but all types of um, oral presentations that you might need to give uh, during your, your studies here and, and beyond. And then the, the second comment, is in terms of the, the expectations um, to, to get a passing grade in this course. So this is a, a zero credit uh, pass fail course. Um, the, the expectation for you to pass uh, is that you engage with this, this process, work with uh, Dr. Bandler uh, and Danny and the, the material that's provided online uh, to, to improve your uh, presentation skills and confidence. Uh, you would get uh, the, the required material, so your script and your your slides in on on time, and then that you would uh, make your best effort on the presentation day uh, to, to take all you've learned and all the feedback uh, you've received uh, to, uh, to 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 give the best presentation you can. Um, so uh, we're not uh, we're not looking to. Uh, to, to have somebody who's the very best uh, speaker only passing. Uh, we want you all to succeed. Um, and, and really what's required is for you to engage with the process, do your best um, and, and uh, stick to the deadlines, get the material in time, uh, that that will, uh, that will give uh, Dr. Bandler and Danny uh, time to give you feedback and new time to take that into account and make the improvement so that you can uh, do your very best uh, on the, the presentation day. Um, so, uh, so I hope uh, that, that you're aiming not just to pass, but really use this as a great opportunity like so many students have before to improve their presentation skills. And uh, like Dr. Davidson, I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing the, the final presentations uh, in December. Great, thank, thank, thanks so much, Ian and Tim. I really appreciate it. Um, so excellent. Um, okay, so we'll move on now. And again, Ian and Tim, you're welcome to stay, but you've heard some of this many times. And uh, but, but 
please please do stay and engage if you have it if you have time okay thanks okay so do you dread presentations don't let yours be one of them is definitely a, a saying that one could have. No, do you dread presentations by other people? Don't let yours be one of them. Do you dread Zoom presentations? Don't let yours be one of them. And you'll be doing a presentation over Zoom. And, you know, honestly, I think, I don't know if, if you agree with me, but, you know, I there are so many things to see out there. There are so many meetings online that, you know, we obviously all pick our way very carefully through this. Now, I, I really would need to make uh, a time for a few acknowledgements. A tremendous number of people have helped me along the way here, particularly Daniel Tajik, Michelle Obrodnik, Rachel Ho, um, who are from our university. They're all McMaster students. They still are right now, PhD students and Aline Eid, who's a PhD student at Georgia Tech. Um, again, uh, Erica Dow and Anna Kovacevic. Anna Kovacevic uh, is now a uh, resident here in Hamilton in the, in the medical, uh, having, having graduated in med from medical school. And uh, Erica Dow is still on a PhD program here at McMaster. Erin Kiley is a mathematician. Robin Ayello is an explorer. And uh, seems she's sorry she couldn't be with us. Uh, she got involved, heavily involved in many, many um, uh, 3MT workshops uh, with groups at McMaster University. So need to acknowledge her. One of the things I would suggest for watching this um, presentation, um, if you're not already aware of it, you can see if you see the slide on one end of your screen and the speakers on the other, um, one of the things to do, of course, is to is to avoid virtual backgrounds if you can. Um, hide non-video participants. Again, that's another way of, of of having more real estate on your screen. And in gallery view, side by side mode, you can scale the speaker and slide windows by moving a partition. So you should be able to scale down the slide that you're seeing and scale up the speaker's windows. If they have any trouble with that, let me know. But that's another way to, so that you're not faced with a gigantic slide and a tiny little speaker on the side. Again, a whole bunch more acknowledgements. There's so many people, many, many of them this year and last year um, that have either been uh, involved in the presentation of Three Minute Thesis or in the recording of of these and editing, uh, presenting, and you, you may see some familiar names here. A lot of people have helped me in this. Okay, so we welcomed our guest speaker. Hopefully he's still around. Uh, do show yourself if you like at any moment and, and, and jump in Mahmoud at any time with any comments that you have. Um, we'll have a few words on problems with presentations, technical presentations in general certain presentation do's, presentation don'ts. And then we'll try to also focus on what might be the difference between virtual and digital and in-person. There are so many labels that are given to some of these presentations, it's become quite dizzying. We will then um, play uh, Mahmoud Wagi's uh, Three Minute Thesis video, which is also available online. And then uh, we'll comment on it, discuss it, and, and open the floor for, for discussion from all of you. We'll talk about core images and slides and titles uh, and, and so on. There's lots, lots of stuff to talk about. Again, don't try to read every word on the slide. Just let your eyes jump to whatever looks exciting. Um, okay, Daniel, let me ask you, you can unmute yourself. And is there any word here that jumps out at you you'd like to say something about? Um, I think the citation really jumps out to me because uh, when we were doing it last year, you don't really realize how important it is to, to put that citation in there and give credit for the image you're using, especially even if you're using your own image in your slide. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. And citations are so frequently left out. And the citation, even if you take something off the internet, 
you know, an image over Google, you can at least say that you, you can at least tell us where you got it. You do not want to give the impression that it's your work if it's not your work. That's the bottom line. Uh, uh, so that's great. Mahmoud, I, I feel there, you want to jump in for a moment. Uh, any word that jumps out at you from your experience? Yeah, I do. And I think uh, one key one, which we don't really think about when it comes to presentation, is actually about the ethics, which I'm really happy to see in the slides, <laughs> especially in something like a three minute thesis presentation or more of a sales pitch kind of presentation. We do try and make it as exciting as possible, as engaging as possible. But at some point, you have to take that step back and think, have I actually done this? And is this actually an honest and accurate presentation to the general public who doesn't really know much about what I'm doing? Or am I giving them a false image and making things sound a lot greener than what they are. Yeah, no, Mahmoud, you, you absolutely nailed it. I mean, and you know, Danny, you, as from my perspective, you picked out one of the most important words and Mahmoud picked out maybe even slightly more important because if you think about it, citation, you can think of that as a subtext of ethics in a way, right? So citation is sort of a subtext. Ethics, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you know, we we always tell people good news we over we exaggerate we say things that we might not have done we would love to do and you know and people are gullible people will you know did you really do that um when it might simply be a, a pipe dream or a sales pitch I, I, mahmoud i agree totally with you and you articulated it so well that's that's really really good and we can follow up on any of any of those things. And at this particular time, um, uh, everybody else, unmute and jump in at any moment that you feel you want to say something. And uh, okay, so there are so many different forms of presentation, and I'm happy to address any one of these. I've sort of been involved in almost all of these. Is it a physical classroom or auditorium that you're presenting it? Is it online as a meeting? Is it one-on-one -on -one in person? Is it one-on-one -on -one online? Are you recording something into a camera uh, on your computer, for example? Uh, are you uh, presenting to an off-camera interview? There's my camera. There's my interviewer over there, and I'm talking to the interviewer. Or is it an on-camera interviewer? Is it a voiceover that you're doing, voiceover a slide? There are so many different things and we, we can talk about any one of these. One of the important things to my way of thinking is obviously don't be ill-prepared, don't rush, don't run out of time, don't be monotonic in, in what you say because if you, you'll put people to sleep if you're monotonic. Don't seem distant, seem present, seem, be, being present is quite important. Don't swallow words, um, which is something everybody does. And I'm gonna do that in this presentation several times. I will somehow swallow words uh, that I, may be unintentional. I'm not thinking about it at that time. It becomes very difficult for the other person listening to maybe catch those words. And don't sabotage your name. That is, the, even experts will sabotage their names. There are so many exotic names, so many names from so many different places. Articulating your name to be remembered is really, really important. And don't sabotage your first impression. Some of you are, have your, are having your first impression of me and of Danny in our environments. I worked on this environment here today to have a couple of my paintings behind me. So this will be your first impression of me, or unless you already have, have it from some other location. So hopefully my impression I'm giving you isn't terribly bad. Okay, the bottom line for three minute thesis is your presentation should be three minutes or less. And remember, and we'll be emphasizing this over and over, three minutes is not a target that you're racing towards. It's an upper bound. So you could speak for two minutes, you can speak for one minute, but believe me, a one minute presentation is harder to do than a two minute presentation. So you may, it may be you know, something you might not have thought of. And then one static PowerPoint slide, which is visible to the audience or judges, 
for the full duration of your talk. So that's the idea. One of the things you have to try to learn to do, and that may be very difficult for some of you that, are, that believe you're working in something very abstract that nobody will understand. There are things that I would, do, I would label as extreme jargon that even the experts that you talk to or experts in slightly related subjects may have difficulty defining. Ask, ask, ask uh, you know, uh, the, the next taxi driver who takes you to the airport what the word quantum really means. Or what is the word permeability? It, it, it just, it's just difficult to define. I would call that extreme jargon. Now, in, in the middle column, you'll notice certain words that, that you know, are in the public domain. You'll see that in the public domain. But in, it depends on the context in which it is used. Are those used metaphorically or are they used literally? Are they used for a scientific purpose? You have to be, think, you have to be really, really very cognizant of how the, who the audience is and what their background is and do they understand the con context in which you are speaking. And now stuff that you see in general usage like Bluetooth, metadata, polarized, a frequency, again, they're in general usage. You can use them and you can use them metaphorically. You can also use them literally, but the context, you need to think very carefully about the context in which you're using those. Anyone have anything to jump in on there? Anything anyone would like to ask at this point about, I mean, cutting the jargon, do any of these words jump out at you, to Daniel, any, any, any word that jumps out at you here that you want to say something about or that bothers you or that you think people should know about? I guess it, it, I would say like it is really important to, to take that, uh, to take into account because even if you're talking to an expert from another field, like when we're looking at words like um, spectrum, there's so many different uh, definitions for it and, and ways it's used in different fields. So it's really important that you make sure you're using um, language that's widely understood to somebody from any perspective. Right, great. Okay, so let's move on. Again, uh, audience, do please jump in. Don't be shy. We'll all get to know each other. There's, you know, I, I'm the one who's nervous around here. So don't, uh, you know, I, I, I'm nervous, but I'm still speaking. And so don't, don't, feel, don't feel too nervous. Just jump in and, and, and uh, uh, join the discussion. Okay, so do's and don'ts. So avoid jargon, avoid acronyms. If you have an acronym, uh, you know, I would, if, unless the acronym is absolutely well known in the public domain, um, you really should either avoid it or, or spell it out each time, each time you say it. Don't get stuck in details, use metaphors, but when you use metaphors, make sure that the metaphor is not confused for the real thing. I think Mahmoud Wadi had a point there, but ethics, you can be using metaphors and sort of pretend that they might be real. Um, you have to be a little careful that the ethical issue is also also up, um, uh, up uh, foremost in that kind of uh, discussion. Include human stories, and we'll see some of these momentarily. Um, a story about uh, a relative, a, a, a grandparent, uh, someone that you know that you can tell a story about. That engages people. Now you'll need to memorize your presentation. And when you memorize, the authenticity might be at risk. I haven't memorized my speech today. I'm, go, I'm going by a few words that I'm seeing here, but you, you'll need to memorize your presentation and give your audience something that they can take away with, which means, which means um, uh, uh, Something that something that you really want them to know after the uh, after your presentation is over. Now we're going to be doing stuff online, and there's all kinds of things that can go wrong with this online. Uh, there are technical issues. There are physical your physical limitation, where you are, your space, whether you're sitting, whether you're standing, whether you're confined, 
whether there's a, a freeway outside your room that's making a lot of noise. Again, there's the internet bandwidth, there's the resolution of your camera, there's the quality of your microphone, uh, and then the presence or absence of a virtual background. Now, I, I, I discourage virtual backgrounds. Choose a real background, because a virtual background gives the impression you're having, you have something to hide. Uh, so now, uh, is there anything that jumps out at anyone, Daniel or Mahmoud, there about this that you might want to say something or anything that you think, which of these do you think might be the most important factor that, uh, that, that uh, candidates should, should focus on? Any particular issue? I have one, I, I have one in mind to see if Daniel or Mahmoud come up with the same issue. Yeah, I would say, um, especially with your camera and microphone, because those are variables that you can easily control. It's really important because that's the impression you're putting across on in this virtual um, environment. So it's important to try and get the best camera and audio quality that you can for these presentations. Right, right. Yeah, and you know, having said that, um, when it comes to videos, online videos, microphone quality is more important than camera quality or resolution. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to hear what people are saying, uh, and you're not quite so bothered whether the image is fuzzy. Anything jump out at you there, uh, Mahmoud? Yeah, and I think I'm going to make a more generic one in here, and that's about surprises. I think it sums all of them up, but one thing I don't want when I'm making a presentation to many people is any surprises in my setup. So before I ever go and present, I will start to call using the same medium, whether it's Zoom or Teams or whatever, on my own, just to make sure that the different software don't interpret cameras and microphones in different ways, and that the lightning and those things looks different every time. And it's one thing that I had to adjust for every piece of software. So one thing you really don't want is surprises on any of these factors which are all pretty much equally important yeah no, you're right you're right and you know talk about surprises when when there is an event that i have to do that i get involved in that's going to be seen around the world by any audience and i have a co-presenter we rehearse endlessly you know sharing slides stop sharing sharing slides recording you know, you, you, you can drive yourself crazy with preparations, but really you don't want surprises and you want the audience to feel that you've put some effort into this. Okay, now for a few little details um, that, that I think are worth noting, um, my recommendation is 120 words per minute. Now, some people can really speak at 150 words per minute, but you have to be incredibly clear and incredibly articulate to go beyond 120. Now, in a virtual environment where you have internet problems and bandwidth issues and uh, you know words that drop out here and there and your, your image freezing on the screen, 110 might be, but you better knock that down. Um, now, another suggestion is starting early on your image. You know, don't start on a script and think of what kind of image should I support this script with or, 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 or so. Um, start on your core image. I would even say start with your title. What's a catchy title that you might have? Then figure out what kind of... Um, what kind of uh, image might go with this? And then write your speech. Um, indicate your qualifications one way or another, that you're with a certain university or a lab or, 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 or in a certain team. Consider story format. Once upon a time, there was, and again, there's the hero of the story. And finally, what happened to that hero? We'll see examples of that a little bit later today. Be specific, don't, don't jump into generalities. Being specific, giving examples engages people more than, than broad generalities. When you're memorizing a script, move around, get up away from your computer. I know it's convenient to look at your computer. Get up, walk around, look at your script, take it away. There are ways of doing that. You need to be able to memorize your script in a variety of conditions so that you can be flexible. If you're used to memorizing your script, strictly looking at the computer and sitting, if somebody asks you to stand, you'll suddenly forget your lines. 
and, and rehearse with people who haven't heard you. The biggest mistake people make is you they deliver a speech once to a friend or a family member, family member or friend didn't quite understand it, gives them some feedback, then they do it a second time, then a third time, and guess what? By that time, it doesn't really matter what they say, the family member or whoever you're rehearsing with has already tuned themselves to it. They're not gonna, it'll be clear to them because you need to be able to present to people that have never heard you before. And again, don't be satisfied with kindness. They, uh, your friends and family will be, oh, that's great, wonderful speech, beautiful, excellent. Uh, they want to be kind to you, right? Nobody wants to be unkind. Again, don't look like you're reading the script. Right now, I'm reading my script. My, I'm, my eyes are moving back and forth. I'm reading my script, and you know that I'm reading a script. Make eye contact. And if you're doing this in a virtual environment and you've memorized your script, do what I'm doing right now. Look into the camera. That's where the audience is. The audience is not down here. The audience is there. Um, so, and again, pause. And we'll see that in Mahmoud's uh, video, which is coming very shortly. The floor is yours. You're not going to be interrupted. You have the time there, that three-minute slot. You can pause as long as you like um, for dramatic purposes or whatever. And here's something that I think is important. Listen to the audience. And I, and I use listening quotation marks. And listen to yourself. Somehow be aware of what you're saying and somehow be aware of listen, listening to the audience as if you are feeling their interactions. And be in the moment. And being in the moment is a theatrical term that says, you know, uh, if something goes wrong, like a, your canary flies across the room while you're doing a presentation or an interview, or the dog barks or a cat is jumping up there, you know, don't don't let that make you lose your place. On the other hand, if your canary is dying in the corner, you don't want to keep speaking while your canary is about to die, right? You want you want to at least recognize the audience will think this is really strange if you don't attend. Shouldn't you be attending to that noise? And again, uh, dress is important. You know, uh, it's also part of the impression. Should you be or should you be informal or should you be formal? So and be kind to the judges or the and, and the viewers and being kind to them means let them understand what you're saying. Give them something to take away. Now in virtual presentations, I strongly, I more than ever recommend script redundancies to combat internet issues. There's nothing worse than if you have a key word or a key phrase that is somehow lost to the audience because something went wrong at that moment with the internet connection. So you need to really build in extra redundancies into your presentation. And it doesn't hurt anyway. The audience will not hate you because they're hearing it for the first time. Somehow connect to your slides with relevant words and gestures. Now remember, remember, uh, this is the left-hand side of my screen, but it's the right-hand side of your screen. So if I'm pointing to the left-hand side of my slide, you'll say, why am I pointing to the right-hand side? Normally a slide would be behind me and left and right are very clear. So be, be concerned and use a Bluetooth mic. You might want freedom of movement. You can get up, you can walk around. Don't look at the screen. Don't read your script from the screen unless this, I mean, in, it depends on the, con, in, on the context of course, but if it's three minute thesis, uh, you, you, you mustn't have the script on your screen. Keep the camera at eye level. Uh, this is at eye level. If you're looking down or looking up at the camera, you'll have strange angles behind you. Now, the angles behind me are not vertical because I, the paintings are on easels, but that's normal. But if I had walls or doors or anything behind me, they really should be vertical. And that, you know, keep it, uh, keep your eye at camera level. Um, look into the camera, as I said, and look away to signal. And so when you look away, you can, there's nothing wrong with you have to look into the camera all the time. You can look away, but you can look away to signal that you're thinking about something. You want to give the illusion you're in real time. I don't fake it, but there's nothing wrong. You can say, 
everybody knows this, everybody, okay? As if everybody is right there in the room with you. So don't worry about that. And as I say, acknowledge your distraction in real time. Sit back so that hand gestures are visible. Daniel is sitting a little too close to his uh, computer right now, so he's not really in proper 3MT formats. And, and, and Mahmoud has too much space above his head. Ideally, ideally, he should be a little higher or the camera a little lower, because I think I can't see what the angle of his camera is. But anyway, if possible, as little space above your head as, as, as you can. I'm looking at my image of myself here. And make sure your hands are visible. Uh, it, 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 it helps. And I've already talked about the reversal of slides. Um, rehearse, record yourself, watch yourself, rehearse, record. Just keep doing it over and over again. You'll be surprised uh, what you discover. So we're gonna deal with one case study in detail. Uh, Mahmoud's uh, virtual 3MT from, from last year. Now, as you watch this, as you listen to it, look for metaphor, look for believability. And Mahmoud raised that issue himself about ethics and believability. So look for that, look for purposeful gestures that are meaningful. Look, see how he engages, if at all, in or in what way with his slide or images. Watch for those or listen to those dramatic pauses. How does he make it relatable to uh, you know the general public? Uh, we'll look for humor, look for storytelling, and look for possible uh, takeaways. So he, Mahmoud was a second place winner uh, at last year's IEEE Microwave Week uh, 3MT. It's a you know pretty stiff, pretty stiff competition, a very very stiff competition that he had last year. So I'm going to play the video. And you may notice, you may notice some delay. I'm playing this off the internet. So you may notice a little bit of delay between the picture and the sound, but don't let that bother you. It, it, it's actually correct when you go to YouTube and watch it yourself. It's just that I'm taking this right off the internet right now. So let's watch this and listen and um, talk on the other side. Imagine if all rain Imagine if all rain was wasted. That doesn't sound right. Thankfully, this doesn't really happen to rain. But the same happens right now to power, wireless networks, 5G, even Wi-Fi, waste power, and our electronics are thirsty for power. You don't hear anyone saying, I'm satisfied with my battery life, because we dream of a sustainable, connected world, a world where you don't have to charge and replace batteries every single day. Imagine charging hundreds of batteries, Think about their disposal, the waste, and our planet. This is not the connected world we want. My name is Mahmoud Wagi, and my research brings recycling to rescue. And no, not household recycling. I recycle power, power from radio waves. When you make a phone call, power is scattered as radio waves. I design antennas that collect radio waves and convert them into power, clean DC power. Isn't free power great? But if power is really around us, why is no one using it? The power is thousands of times smaller than what your phone consumes. And I have tuned my antennas to absorb very small signals. My solution to collect more power is inspired by rain. Filling a glass from raindrops doesn't sound very that significant. But try and fill 100 glasses, and it becomes valuable. And it's the same with radio waves. OK, I know radio waves don't fall out of clouds. But radio waves do spread in a similar way to clouds and rain. 
So if you think of antennas as glasses, more antennas equals more power, but only, only if we combine the power from many antennas. Here's a problem. Large antenna arrays are bulky and expensive. My antennas are flexible, light, and cheap. My next step is to fit my antennas into wearable fabrics, creating large area, low cost radio power collectors. So your very own t-shirt can substitute for a battery. I also make my antennas more dynamic to recycle small and large signals simultaneously. My goal is to get you to forget about your batteries, but please don't forget your umbrellas. Thank you. Great. Whoops. I uh, knocked that out. Let's try that again. Okay. So sorry about that little blip. I thought I would mute myself earlier, and just by hitting the mute button, I uh, had to. I stopped the video, which is odd. So. Um, before before we get Mahmoud to say a few things, let, let, let me just look at his opening and closing lines. Um, if you recall, uh, his, both his hands are raised in some kind of contemplation, imagine, and then there's a pause, an a, a emphatic pause, an emphatic uh, uh, phrase comes after, if all the rain was wasted, another pause, Quizzing look straight at the camera. That doesn't sound right. Thankfully, this doesn't really happen to rain. Okay, so there's a lot of a lot of drama in that, and uh, uh, something worth kind of holding on to there. And then, how does he close? My goal is to is to get you to forget about your batteries. But please. And he looks up as if uh, pleading, don't forget your umbrellas. So he talks about the rain at the beginning and ends with the umbrella. So the idea of rain, the idea of rain and uh, so on. So having, having said that, uh, Mahmoud, uh, why don't you jump in, tell us you know, more about your thinking and, and, and what you might have done differently in the last year or knowing what you know, if you knew then what you know now, how would you have done this differently, for example? Yeah, I think that's, that's a very interesting question. It's actually, I've not watched this video for quite a while now, so it's quite interesting to look at it having kind of forgotten what was in there, which ties back to the whole point of getting someone who doesn't know you or doesn't know what you're talking about to review your work because they'll be less familiar with it after a bit of time. Just get so fed up with whatever you're doing that you can't spot the mistakes anymore and you've worked on it so much that it's, it's just you're so familiar with it and there's no way of getting your head around it and thinking of it from a different perspective. I think one theme which I was trying to get through the presentation was linking the metaphor which motivates the work, gives it more physical meaning, was what I was doing. And to a large extent, it was trying to give myself more motivation in what I'm doing and think of it as something that is significant. So even though it sounded like I was doing something that is a bit inefficient, gets very small powers that can be a bit impractical, but in a bigger picture, there is something else that works, which is collecting rainwater which fills all the reservoirs that we use to get water, for instance. So in a way, you could use that same metaphor to justify the work and make it sound as something that is more meaningful. I think in the process, the main thing that I want to emphasize is the amount of practice and the iteration the script has gone through. So you might find somewhere on the internet the script which I presented a few months before this, which again, uses the same metaphor of rain and radio waves, but it was rolled in a completely different storyline which I think reflects how much time, the more time you spend on a presentation, the better it looks in the end. And it's all about practice more than talent, in my opinion. And anyone want to jump in, please uh, unmute yourselves audience and ask Mahmoud a question. Or... Don't be shy. You don't have to turn your video on if you don't want to. 
nobody there. It's a very silent. Uh, yeah. Actually, I have a question. Uh, like preparing the three minutes, like how did you start thinking about the idea? This is Muhammad Walala first. Like, hi, everyone. So I wanted to know from Mahmoud, like, how did you start thinking about your uh, idea to talk about um, your research and related to real life? Um, like, from where did you start? Because this is a little bit, uh, I like that very much, but I, 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 a little bit I'm confused. How, how can we start something like this? The first start, which you actually didn't see in this video, which went in my earlier three minute thesis video, was thinking about the problem of batteries. So I knew that the end goal of my work is to get rid of batteries and replace them with radio waves. And that's how I started my presentation. I can't remember the exact line, but it was something along the lines of, we always run out of battery or we never say that we are satisfied with no battery life, which is again, lines that I've reused in this presentation, but it came a bit later in. The metaphor came in a bit later in my thought process, in fact, in my earliest three minute thesis competition, it came towards the very end and it was in the last 30 seconds of my presentation, which I think if depends on how much you want to emphasize it in this presentation, it was present at the start in the middle and in the back. And I think it's one of those take home messages which you could really take from the video. So my advice and sort of thought process, and it links back to the slide is think of a storyline, think of a picture because that will help the audience visualize and the audience will be staring at the picture even before you start talking. So when you look at the slide, which I had, you'll see an umbrella, you'll see glasses. If you're really, uh, if you've got really sharp eyesight and you know what antennas look like, you might even spot the antennas in my slide. Mm -hmm. And that will kind of give you the context. And if you link it back to the title of the presentation, you might even figure out what this is all about. If not, it comes back later in the second minute, which gives, I think, an element of suspense, which to an extent is good. Maybe you don't want your audience to hang out for too long waiting for the actual core of the presentation gives that you only have three minutes, but it's better to create that suspense, create those pauses, which help you think about it. So think about the bigger picture, think about the end goal of your research, but it doesn't necessarily need to be at the start of your presentation. Think about the picture and work the slide and the script together to try and get them to complement each other and to get your message across in the first 60 seconds and then start to go deeper in the subject and then talk about maybe why your work is significant, why is it different to other people. So don't jump straight into that point of my work is more significant because of X. Keep that maybe to the second half of your second minute or even the start of the third minute when people are already familiar with your voice, familiar with the topic, and they can now get in more information out of what you're explaining. Yeah, it's a very valuable idea. You need you need you need the audience to become familiar to, with your voice. I think that's an excellent idea as well. Is when you start off uh, with imagine if all the rain was wasted. That doesn't sound right. You know, those are very easy words to understand. What you're doing is a you are using a metaphor. B you're beginning a story. C you're using simple words. Uh, D you are tuning the audience's cognitive processes with the way you articulate words, and then you start diving into the more detailed stuff. And I think that's a, that there are many, many uh, positive aspects about this. Any other question from anybody or any other follow-up comment? Um, and again, his pauses, you, you know, you, you don't normally think about pauses because you, you, you take it all in as part of an overall package. But what I want you to do is to reverse engineer what Mahmoud did. Or when you see a good uh, 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 presentation that you have watched, I want you to be able to reverse engineer and try to figure out what are the elements that went into this. Now, Mahmoud may not have been necessarily uh, deliberately aware of all of this. He may, he may have done a lot of this intuitively. And that's how most of us work. But what I want you to do is, is go beyond your intuition and just figure out whether by design or by accident, why are these videos highly, highly rated? So we can come back to this and come back to the images while there'll be more about images and opening lines and closing lines. So we'll have more comments from Mahmoud. But anybody else want to ask a question in the meantime? Or oh, Danny, would you like to say something about this uh, at all? Or? 
I would say that the point uh, Mahmoud mentioned about thinking about the bigger picture is really important. Like when I first started thinking about making my presentation, I got too caught up in what I was specifically working on, but more so thinking about the end goal of your research and the implications of it is really important for this presentation because you're presenting it to a general audience. It's not a technical presentation. So it isn't so much about precisely what you're doing and what techniques you're using. It's more so just so people get a general understanding of what your ultimate goal is. I yeah, say. good, good. Um, excellent. Okay, so let, let's move on and uh, look at first impressions. Now, the first impression, you know, uh, the, the audience or your judges, if it's a competition, they may hear your host's introduction, and your host may get your name wrong, may stumble over your name, may misread it, and that becomes part of the first impression of you. But so somebody else may be, let's say, destroying your first impression inadvertently, or you lit literally stumble onto the stage, or in, in terms of uh, an event like this, you, you ask questions, you know, is my microphone working? Am I sitting or can you hear me? All, all the usual things that people do, uh, to, which is the equivalent, in my view, of stumbling onto the stage before you start speaking. So, so audiences may be already biased before you've even said a word. They may hate your slide. And of course, an in-person audience will absorb reactions of people around them. And then, of course, audiences will consider relative performance. So don't ask me where is the best location in a, in a sequence of presentations for yours. Is it the first? Is it the second? Is it the last? You know, we can argue about that all day. There are many different ways of deciding where the best position is for your presentation. Uh, and often you won't have any control over that. So your single static slides, keep them simple, develop it first. Here's the famous blueberry of Daniel Tajik. Um, if you go back over some of the videos, if you go to Daniel Tajik's uh, um, uh, three minute thesis video, this video has now had about, about 3000 views and his repetition of this uh, thing at, 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 at the university has already had about a thousand views. So his three minute thesis video has already gone at about 4,000 views. And there's a, there's a good reason for that. This mysterious blueberry and a pile of blueberries. Um, and Aaron Pitcher, who I think is actually online, I can see his name right there in the list of participants. Aaron, if you're there, I'm showing your slide. Yes, oh, Dr. Van Lyn. Oh. Okay, you, you want to say anything about this slide since you're there in the audience rather than me? I mean, uh, when I was making this slide, uh, I think actually Dan also assisted me uh, in, in doing this, but uh, we took uh, probably hundreds of different photos of myself <laughs> carrying uh, a suitcase down the hallway here at, at Mac. Um, and eventually, you know, as you iterate through it, you see what uh, you, you like, um, and uh, you find that you find some image that hopefully depicts what you're wanting to talk about. Yeah, no, that, that's good. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. There's some interesting stuff. The idea of taking hundreds of pictures or so many pictures, and the idea that this is a personal shot. This is something, this isn't something you took off the internet, and this is something very personal. And you'll see many of the slides that I'm showing are all personally constructed by the people themselves. This one again is a personally uh, photographed uh, picture. Uh, and again, so is this. And notice, by the way, this nice title, Sniffing Out Weapons with Microwaves. Of course, that's a metaphor that will never be understood for real. Again, here's another picture that is a, a photograph that was taken, um, you know, a crumpled, crumpled, crumpled piece of paper with a straight line on it, uh, and then uncrumpled, un, un if you like, or straightened out to see that line. And what does this have to do with brain waves? And and of course, the mystery here is what on earth is in that suitcase? Although there is a little bit of a hint in the title there, so 
Um, so that's, uh, you know, kind of a tension between the title and the picture, which is what you want. And again, here's Mahmoud's uh, radio waves collection, the umbrella. Now, where is that? Where is that uh, antenna, Mahmoud? You said there was the, an the flexible band wrapped around each of the glasses. So I wrapped one antenna attached to each glass. Of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, dear. you're right. Yeah, it's right. It's a Friday afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> very similar to Aaron's slide. This again took hundreds of pictures one sunny afternoon. Not very common here in England, but yeah, made yeah. the most of that in the back garden with lots and lots of pictures of glasses. Try different ratios of water, filling, sprinkling water drops, adding flowers in. So it definitely takes time. And I think seeing that trend in all 3MT slides featured in the presentation, the internet will not have the perfect picture that talks about what you're doing. And unless you're a really skilled 3D graphic designer, a photograph is probably the easiest way for you to express your thoughts in a picture. Yeah, that's a good point. Very good point. Very good point. And here's Aline Eads tarantula. Uh, and by the way, you see something that resembles a real tarantula there as well. And, uh, and and this is really very much the same topic that Mahmoud says about collecting power, uh, collecting power to 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 uh, uh, to uh, charge batteries with. So core images make them memorable. Mystery helps, and we've certainly seen mystery. Here's there's mystery in that. There's certainly mystery in this. Uh, mystery in the earlier ones. Uh, and here, here are some images, Daniel Tajik's blueberry, uh, Aaron's person pulling a suitcase, Kanshu Zhang's lying on a crumpled paper, a tarantula, water glasses under an umbrella, a wildfire, a guitar. And how, what do these all have to do with the subject matter? Uh, it's interesting that these images are really not technical, you know, if you think about them intrinsically. Okay, titles. Sniffing out weapons with microwaves, I think is a great title. Origami, unfolding the future of engineering. Again, a play with words. Are we drinking pharmaceuticals? Uh, where does cancer begin? Fighting obesity with fat. So these are all tantalizing, worry, uh, upsetting, um, dramatic uh, titles. Let's take opening lines. Um, I wrote this myself in italics that you see here. Uh, now the actual line of Katsu Jang, who was one of our three minute thesis uh, contestants, she came second in the department in 2018 where uh, Daniel Tajik came first in that competition. Katsu says, have you, your relatives, your friends ever suffered from a stroke? that immediately engages you as a person. But what is she really saying? She's really saying that occurring with little apparent warning, strokes are a leading cause of disability. I mean, that's the more technical way of saying it, but isn't, which is fine, which you could also begin a three minute thesis, but I think her, hers is a little bit more personable. Now, Daniel Tajik could have said, the more a person undergoes x-ray scans, the greater the risk they will develop cancer. Again, nothing wrong, but it's a very long sentence. Instead, he says, x-rays cause cancer. It's a little unnerving to think about, isn't it? So it, it's, it's more, more engaging. And uh, Mahmoud Wagi, here's something that I wrote myself for, for him, put words in his mouth, if you like. It is not only hard to contemplate the complete wastage of every drop of precipitation that impacts the Earth's surface, it's also implausible. But he says, imagine if all the rain was wasted. That doesn't sound right. It's the same idea. What made it to the headlines as our turbulent year 2020 opened was not the viral pandemic now widely known as COVID-19. Instead, Jay Seth, who won the uh, IEEE microwave week uh, three minute thesis last year said recall january 2020 what was the biggest news it wasn't coronavirus he turns that into a uh, he turns that into a you know a question in a sense closing lines 
And if you go to Aline Eads uh, uh, video from 2019, she says, hi everyone, I'm Aline from the Georgia Institute of Technology, and this is Lucy, the tarantula from the Amazon rainforest. So she's introduced herself, she's given her name, she's given her credentials, she's started a story, and she started a, a connection with her slide in those opening words. How does she close? Thanks to this, we can do away with batteries and their chemical waste. This will make the environment happier, our environment and Lucy's. So again, she started off with Lucy as the hero of the story and she ends with Lucy. Anyone have any questions on anything I've said so far? We're nearing the end here. Not a small thing around here. What's that? Can just add a yeah, quick comment here is oh, yeah. do not feel shy to invest more words in your opening and closing lines. So you can see that both the opening and closing lines here, or even the opening line, the previous slides do not relate to the technical content of the presentation. And in one way or the other, they could have some, been summarized even more to reduce the word count if you're trying to reduce the words in your presentation. But they do set the scene and they do get the audience to know you better through easier, simpler sentences, which are easier to digest. So think about those and do not shy from making it longer and more exciting. Right. And again, you can think of, if you had to cut this down, I, I can think of easy ways of cutting the first opening lines and the closing lines. So the, the, that's right. The, you know, you can make your sentences shorter, you can cut, and uh, don't be afraid of cutting lines. And again, here's Mahmoud's opening and closing. We've already covered that. Um, again, he really, he, oh, in a way, the rain and you, you standing in the rain, you are really the hero of the story. And it's the rain is really falling on you in a sense. Um, so that means he hasn't forgotten about who, that you are the one who was uh, rained upon. So don't forget your umbrella. So I, it, it, it again, he's closing the story there. Um, okay, be authentic, be sincere, be personal, don't act, don't pretend, don't be somebody else. We all have this problem that when we get onto a stage or we address people, suddenly we go into a fake speech mode you know, try to be in a conversational mode. Uh, imagine yourself having a, having coffee with somebody, be conversational, be in that moment and be memorable. Be approachable, look like you're approachable. Um, skip jargon and of course, avoid mind twisting logic. It, it, log, mind twisting logic does not go down well in a speech. It's very difficult for uh, very difficult for someone to keep track of the logic. Remember, it's not something people are going to read. This is something people are going to hear. If it's something they're going to read, then sure, you can have mind twisting logic because they can go back and read it again. They can look at it again, they can stop, but they have no choice but to listen to you as you go through it. So you've got to keep things short, punchy, clean, crisp, and clear. And make sure that your name is repeatable. And we'll we'll go, we'll dive into that quite a bit. Make eye contact, <laughs> whatever that means in a virtual environment. <coughs> and again, be in the moment as if you're in a conversation and be ready to, you know, deal with uh, something happening. Gesture with open hands and go back and watch Mahmoud's presentation. You'll see that he's using open hands quite a bit. And articulate clearly, articulate clearly. Okay, on presentation day, December 20, December 7, 2021, what should you all expect? You will have, we will have a, a, sl a slide deck based on your slides. There will be a filler slide between each presentation. What you're seeing now is a filler slide that I call a, or a transition slide. This will be your, a slide that you will be preparing just to make life a little easy. Here's a template. You'll put the title of your presentation, your name, your affiliation. Um, then your own slide will be this one here to be prepared by you. 
and then there's another filler, and then we go on to the next speech. So while your slide is visible, you will be speaking. Any questions that anybody has on that format? And it'll be live. It will be a live presentation, like, like, like the one is right now. We'll have about three meetings a week. We'll send invitations to everybody. Please feel free to share with each other your slides and script, scripts. Uh, and when you come to these meetings, you can critique everybody. You can, you can help critique people, rehearse, get feedback, and uh, you'll get one-on-one -on -one consultations occasionally. So bottom line, keep the slides simple. One main image, no jargon. Avoid words except for your name and the title and citations. So make sure that there is some kind of citation. If there's no citation, it is, people will assume that you created that slide on, as an original piece of work yourself. Here is our schedule for next week. You already have this in your email. Um, so I'm just repeating that. There's a Dropbox uplink for drafts in progress. You can send these anytime anytime send us a, a script or slide in progress and the scripts don't have to be complete you can send in a partial script an idea a title a draft of a slide you can put them in as of tomorrow as of today and get feedback next week so danny and i will be available for group and meetings and consultation uh, those are email addresses so thank you i will stop sharing this and uh, ask if there are any questions at this particular point, or Danny or Mahmoud, whether you want to say anything, uh, any add anything. We have a good audience here, and uh, yeah, I, I would just add: make sure before uh, we come to those meetings, make sure you upload your slides and your script if you if you have them done or the drafts you have just so we can prepare them and have them so we can both be seeing the same things yeah definitely yeah you know keep, just put them in there yeah. and um so that with the you know if you want to if you want to have comments and anyone else any anything that anybody is puzzled by in terms of presentations uh, we have Mahmoud here. What are you What are you up to these days, Mahmoud? What, what are you actually doing now? Continuing with your doctoral work, you uh, know, in, in a way, or what you did there? Yeah, you know, I'm still working on the same topic. So it's still RF energy harvesting. It's still power transmission related. It's all related to microwaves, which is still lots of work to be done in that field. Right. That's good. That's good. And I think the three minutes ethos presentation <laughs> and experience generally just it comes up in all sorts of times. It just helpful general conference presentations with writing papers even putting figures and photographs in papers they all they all just somehow link back to that slide i was preparing yeah so um anyone else uh i hope hope to see some of you next week um you don't you, you don't you don't all have to come to all the meetings but i i would strongly suggest that you will you should all have been to at least one of the meetings between now and the deadline for handing in your first uh, first drafts um but initially before you hand in your first draft don't 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 be shy about hand you know opening lines you know what i would suggest is uh Work on a slide, possible slide, work on a title, write down some possible opening lines, write down some closing lines, because you want to make sure that the two of bookend the story properly. If you if you watch Daniel Tajik's three-minute thesis presentation, he didn't really he didn't really bookend his presentation the way I would have liked. That was that but that was uh, five years ago. And uh, I, I think it, it didn't quite bookend it the way we can bookend it now. Things, are, things have sort of evolved, at least in my brain, uh, since that time as to what might come out best. But think of the opening lines, think of the closing lines, and then, and then worry about what goes in between in the middle. And, and 
don't be afraid to overwrite initially. Write 500 words. You know, uh, write furiously, be repetitive, do what you think, and then start cutting. Keep your original 500 words, if that's what it is. And let's say you're aiming at 300, but you start off with 500. Just keep on cutting it, you know, keep that original block, cut it down to 400, cut it down to 300 in stages. You will be amazed that if you really examine very carefully what you've done, how easy it is to cut and how easy it is to take a whole phrase and replace it by a single word. Don't be afraid of starting off with a question. Have you is one way to start off. You instantly engage any audience, particularly if they're watching, if you're up there and you're, the, you're, you're watching. Have you, you're actually looking at somebody. Have you, your relatives, your friends. Watch Kanshu Zhang's presentation. She really moves around quite a bit on that stage and looks in a number of different directions and engages the audience. Ask a question. We don't often do that in a technical presentation. It's very rare in, a, in the introduction to a technical paper that you start off with a question. You usually start off with, this paper presents a breakthrough, blah, 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 right? Yeah. But if you ask the question, did you think that the paper I did last, last week was a breakthrough? Well, you're wrong. This paper is the breakthrough. <laughs> So, I mean, that would be a little bit more engaging, but if you were in a conference and you were you felt confident enough, you might actually do that. Now, last, if any of you here saw me last year make a presentation and I said that I was, this was a breakthrough, don't believe me, I was lying to you at the time. This paper is the breakthrough. I mean, that's engaging, it it's, may not be ethical, <laughs> you, you may be you may be shading the ethics there a little bit, but as as I as you might see, everybody have fun with this thing. Don't take it too seriously. The serious part is that, and as Mahmoud can testify, and Danny as well, because he's done three thesis, is those people that have done this and have done this, you know, reasonably well. They're presentations in general, their regular presentations, their technical presentations, just simply improve. It's very difficult to go backwards. Once you put yourself into the mind of an audience, no matter who that audience is, it's very difficult to sort of then do what every technical person typically does as they speak at the audience. That they very rare, very rarely speak with the audience. They speak at the audience. So have fun with it. With this, ask questions. What, Danny? Do you remember the opening lines of your presentation, or just the? Uh, yeah, I think it was. Imagine uh, one day if you woke up and you couldn't hear a thing, and then I went into it. Oh, you know, that's pre that's pretty good. Do you remember how you closed? See, I'm asking him this off. <laughs> yeah, I'm embarrassing him. Don't, <laughs> don't worry about it. I just, this is, you know, if you asked me what I said five minutes ago, I, I wouldn't know what I said. Mm -hmm. Funny, the, the way I, because I, I know you mentioned earlier in the presentation about how to memorize it and memorizing it in different places. While I was memorizing it, I walked through like my house and memorized, like, okay, this is this stage of it. And then, well, so the, like, it's hard for me to pick out different sectors. Like I kind of have to go through the full presentation to, but that's why the beginning is easy, but. Right, right, right. Well, you know what I suggest, I don't know how you feel about this, Mahmoud, you've done so many presentations, but I, I feel that in order to avoid surprises, you know, you need to be able to recite your presentation in different environments walking up the stairs, walking down the stairs, walking around the house, walking down the street. If you can cross a busy road, a busy freeway, still speaking and not missing a beat, you know, then you may, A, you may know this pretty well and nothing will phase you, you know, nothing will phase you. 
uh, and if nothing faces you, so then you can sound. And when you say, can you hear me? Am I coming through? When you say that, it sounds authentic. It's almost like it's part of the speech. I think it links to how long, how much time do you have to deliver the presentation? A three minute presentation, you can't really afford to forget your script or just start to improvise. But if I'm giving a 30 minutes talk, I mean, I gave a 45 minutes lecture a couple of weeks ago and I've rehearsed it once just to make sure the timing works. But on the day, it was much more authentic. It was much more engaging to just not recite and to improvise it. But if I'm to ever repeat a three minute thesis or give a 90 second elevator pitch or something, I'm definitely going to memorize it word to word and including pauses, silences and gestures. Right. So it all links to how much time you are allowed on stage and that, that trade off between authenticity and rehearsal and perfection. Right, right, right. So Manuel, you, you, you opened up earlier on with this idea of ethics. You want to say any, any, a few more words about that, having seen some of the you know, other, uh, let's say, uh, uh, opening lines and so on. Anything jump out at you in terms of ethics, or have you have you been burned in some way by this issue? I think in three minute thesis competitions, maybe don't, didn't notice it as much. But generally, when we try and speak about research in public, or try and make demonstrations or film videos showing something that works, especially as I, I tend to work a lot with hardware and prototypes, behind the camera there are lots of really bad things that we don't want anyone to see and. In a way, if I'm explaining it to experts, if I'm writing a scientific paper, I know the reviewers are experts, they're going to tear me apart for these mistakes and it will all get fixed during the review. But if I'm talking to non-specialists, then I have to be really honest because chances are this is the only time they learn about microwave engineering in my case or whatever your research is in. So you don't want them to walk away thinking that you could power your phone from your own phone calls, which probably breaks physics. So you don't want this kind of misconception to go in. It's fine to talk about applications or maybe about your next steps, as I did in a way, in my opinion, some people might think that's again, overstretching, but in a way that balance, you have to think about it and think of your responsibility towards that person who doesn't know much about your field, definitely less than you do. So yeah, so powering your own phone from your phone sounds to me like a perpetual motion machine, right? <laughs> Pretty much is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as I say. So um uh so okay, so if 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 um if there's no more questions and you know I won't keep you guys any longer. Thank you so much, Mahmoud, for joining us. I really appreciate it. It's late, late in England right now. Um okay, guys. If there's nothing else, then let's say goodbye. And see you guys next week. Okay, so we'll close up. Okay, all the best. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye, Professor. Bye. Bye. Bye.